And now, from the bowels of the internet, it's the Hate Big Podcast. Jingling titties! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Vaginas. friends. And welcome to the Vagina Hour. No, 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 the, the Hate Bit Podcast. I didn't know this as always. Alpha Omega Sid. Hi there. I have nothing clever. It's the end of the year. Fuck you. I'm spent. Raise your fist. <laughs> it's it's the vagina hour, or alternately, the view. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> now, the man who knows all about vagina, the most Mexican man there is, Mr. A. Salieri. Hello. <laughs> and, and yeah, speak, speaking of vagina, everything is made in vagina. Oh. <laughs> God, come we, on! You could have yeah, saved that for the because we're going to talk about China right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we're we're bringing out the A material right here for our end of your. Yeah, I was gonna say to be fair, that sounds like something that was on the cutting room floor of an unreleased Adam Sandler movie, uh, and <laughs> even with like the voice work, uh, I'm actually yeah, but impressed. It certainly. sounds like it's it sounds like like something Rob Schneider would say, right? That that's exactly well. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be cut from an Adam Sandler film, but shoehorned into a Rob Schneider film. <laughs> so it'll, it'll work out perfectly for everybody. Anyway, thank you for joining us, and welcome to our show. We've got a great big show, a big show, a king-size show. And wasting no time at all, we take you to Battlefield, China. <laughs> at least according to IGN.com, reported by Leah Jackson, uh, some DLC, or ba Battlefield for itself, banned in the, the People's Republic of China over controversial DLC. For more, we go to Razorfist, who's just really worked up over this, because he, yes. he, he had to play this game, and now they don't have to. <laughs> I know. I mean, now he, they he get bought the of... DLC for it, and, you know, all, the, all those Chinamen crossing the river, and he called them Rice Krispies. <laughs> Good times. Wow. Wow. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Don Rickles, circa 1985. Right. Uh, the the Ministry of Col of Chinese Culture apparently uh, said Battlefield 4. Then this is their official statement. Battlefield 4 is an illegal game. Uh, now, mind you, this is in written form, so there's no uh, LR reversal. Uh, with content that endangers national security, it is an aggressive attack on our culture, much like that last joke. After the ban of Battlefield 4, we demand that all items related to the game, downloads, raiders, patches, and news, are to be deleted, which is freaking ridiculous. Apparently, it was, uh, it's from, what is it, the China, Ri what is it? China Rising or something, or maybe I'm thinking of a, uh, I, I, I don't know like exactly. It's like a Tony Jaw movie. What, no, what is the name of the, uh, the DLC? Oh, yeah, it's China Rising DLC. Yeah. Uh, they they found it offensive in some regard. I don't know why, because actually most there's a huge chunk of the game that takes place in China, and it doesn't exactly depict the country in a terribly favorable light. It's all about the Chinese people overthrowing their government. Which, gosh, what an unrealistic concept, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that I really don't understand what is terribly offensive about this. We've had enough freaking games where there's been a totalitarian regime running America. And there's rebels taking it over, Deus Ex. I mean, how many freaking games exist that do that? We don't censor the shit out of those games. What the fuck is going on, people? I just don't understand it. I, I think it's completely pointless. I think ultimately all they're doing is giving some free publicity to Battlefield, because now you know the nerdy fucks in China are going to go out and pirate the shit out of this game and play it like crazy. Yeah. I thought, I thought the most common crime in China was identity fraud. No, the most common crime in, in China is playing a terrible fucking first-person shooter, apparently. Because that's what's <laughs> going to happen, too. They're going to encourage them to play this horrible, horrible game, which is, you know, it's marginally better than Call of Duty Ghosts, but Jesus Christ, you know. Is it, okay, it's a solid, why, a solid why boycott, is better than... Why boycott the, the entire shit. game? Yeah, why I boycott don't, the entire game over DLC? Just don't buy the DLC! I don't know. You get, ever get the idea this is some sort of backwards propaganda, like when they lied and said that Paul McCartney was dead in order to sell Beatles albums? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't have it in China. Well, then the Chinese people who actually have money are probably going to call people in Japan. Yeah, I, I just, I severely doubt. There's a whole new black market. I guess I just severely doubt that in the name of some, you know, video game that they find marginally offensive, they're going to break out the fucking... They're going to... They're. <laughs> 
they're going to break out the Turkish water hoses or whatever. I just, I don't see it fucking happening. Uh, they're just, it's just a fucking video game. You I, never I, know. Don't forget, this is the country that built half of Disneyland and then changed their mind. That's true. I don't know. So, you know, don't put anything past the Chinese. The Chinese, when they get an idea, they stick with it about 64%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You can tell because that's how much their uh their you know, their population goes up annually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, they're they're behind things. But, you know, or or behind or I thought, in front. I, I don't thought know the population was actually beginning to contract. But I I could be wrong. I could be Well, just well, they better hope so cuz don't forget these are also the people that are building cities with no people in them. Yeah, that, I always found that horrifying. I, uh, I think like, they were. Like, how, how is that any different from all the cookie cutter houses on the outskirts of L.A. and Phoenix? <laughs> yeah, I no, think well, they were offended by the. They were offended by by the DLC because all the bad guys look the same. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I was uh, gonna say we we could actually say that about pretty much any video game. And it's just like, wow, look at that low res person over there. You can tell that they're clearly not part of the storyline. What's and now and now for the most flagrantly offensive joke that I will tell this entire episode. You promise? <coughs> you yeah. might say their news coverage is slanted. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to hell. I was gonna say you were going to hell well before that. This I, is <laughs> I thought, I, I thought you were going to make like a I thought you were going to make a, a Chinese women can't drive joke, but okay. <laughs> no, no, I thought you were going to make a melanoma joke like their news coverage is spotty. Oh. Oh, don't make it seem like I'm any worse than you are. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. Anyway, so that's what's going on in China. <laughs> Meanwhile, in, over in Japan, you know, the fine folks at Capcom, they, they say lots of things. And recently, they said that you know, there's 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 been all this discussion about what has happened to you know through Capcom's treatment of the Resident Evil franchise, and they broke it down and they figured it out. They said Resident Evil's fan base is too old. Well, I mean, to to be fair, I did see a copy of Resident Evil One in a museum somewhere. Oh yeah, was it one of those VGA graded games? It was like nineteen thousand dollars, wasn't it? <laughs> Incredibly rare, Dual Shock Edition. In a museum, wasn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, when I played Resident Evil 1 for the first time, I was taking Flintstones vitamins. Now I take Viagra and nitroglycerin pills. So, I mean, that should tell you something about the Resident Evil fan base. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, but you were already, like, 50 years old then. Right? <laughs> Back there, I mean, now, the Ecto Cooler. I know. When, uh, when the Back first Resident Evil, when, when the first Resident Evil came out, I was in diapers, and now I'm in diapers. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, when I used to hear the snaps, crackles, and pops in the game, I thought it was great sound effects. Nowadays, I worry for my health. Yeah, Lots no. more serial jokes coming right after this. <laughs> the only thing that's kind of fucked up about all this is that this isn't the first time that a big-time publisher slash developer has ever went and said that they had to do something drastic with their franchise, do squarely in part to the, the existing fan base is just too old and clearly is not going to be interested in the franchise, let alone, you know, all the things that made it interesting to begin with, you know, the next generation won't find those same things interesting. So they have to change things up. And the last time I heard that was uh, over at, I think it was Axis and the people in charge of Guilty Gear. So now they have to bring back Guilty Gear because they realized that they shot themselves in the foot and Capcom, is to the point of they're just chopping down their own peg legs, and it's pretty fucking depressing. Well, that, that's you know what? I think we all see right through this. They are they're blaming absolutely anything but themselves because Capcom is in the utter shit house right now. Okay, Boy, Capcom yeah. is bleeding revenue. They, I mean, they're we we had no idea back when we were talking shit about Capcom for all those months. We had no idea how bad it really was over at Capcom of Japan. But I mean, they're absolutely going up like the Hindenburg. Well, uh, we kind of knew it was it was bad when they canceled when they decided, hey, fuck Mega Man, we're getting this out of our repertoire. Yeah, well, they they've been ignoring Mega Man for a long since before they started losing money. But, yeah. again, I wonder if there's any connection there, Capcom. Right? 
But, but yeah, it's no, just... it's, it's because gamers are old now. Don't you get it? It's our fault. <laughs> and that's just it. They are blaming absolutely anything. I mean, if it, if there were no gamers to blame, they'd be blaming the fucking sunrise. Because anything is easier than admitting that you fucked up repeatedly and you're continuing to fuck up to this very day. Well, that Resident Evil 6 isn't particularly interesting, maybe? Yeah. Well, see, with Resident Evil 6, they, they were bitching and complaining that their 5.2 million sales worldwide just weren't that... You know, they were trying to. Say, they were expecting was, seven million. That's why. Yeah, it, it, that that's an adequate amount, and I'll admit, five point two million isn't something to snuff at. But considering the fact that they put in how big of a fucking budget, they had their biggest team that they've ever used on making any kind of a game. So they. And that's part of the problem is that a lot of these companies are just shoveling too much cash to make these sleeper games that that nobody wants to really play. I, I, it's, I'd prefer these indie companies now, the ones who, who put in a hundred bucks and make a great game, you know. Well, I don't know about great. It, usually, it's just a, <laughs> usually it's just a retro. It's a competent game from 1987. Usually, yeah. Maybe, maybe it's because I'm old. <laughs> yeah, I it is. Play it's games from 1987. Yeah. <laughs> if you'll if you'll pardon Asa, he has to go soak his joints in Epsom salts now. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> well, okay, well, no, Asa, did you get that Jack Lane juicer I sent you? Ah, <laughs> uh, definitely. Yes, thank you. Good, good, good. Well, I actually own Back a when I used to get juicer, killed. guys. I know. I stole it from your house. I sent it to Asa. <laughs> you never I fucking used to get used killed. It. Just like that goddamn bread machine in your closet. But Alpha, <laughs> Alpha. I mean, you're, you're Alpha is the guy known for ranting against Capcom. Okay, like you've done so many videos on Resident Evil and Capcom. People almost come to you when Capcom makes a fucked up decision, which is really frequently. And, and now, and now he can't he can't say a word of it because he's, he's tired because he's old. <laughs> well, he's... but like, don't you agree? Like, part of this is just flat out. Like, look at the. I mean, they they released Resident Evil Six in 2012. All right. Yep. Is it is it not correct? Like the same crap that came out that year was what Resident Evil Raccoon City. I mean, a, bu a bunch of garbage, right? That res the, the simple fact is Resident Evil the brand has been devalued to such a humongous extent, and they have no one to blame but themselves. No, it's it's totally. it's very, very true. But they, you also got to look at what their fucking bozo-ass idea was, and that was to take it in a new direction to get, you know, this new audience that's buying this one thing. And they even admitted themselves that they wanted the Call of Duty audience and that they were trying to capture that Call of Duty audience, and that's why the game is the way that it is, and they never actually saw how short-sighted that they were, that you abandon everything that made it work, that made it into a household name, that even spawned live-action, heinously fucking stupid-as-fuck movies. Oh. And, it, I mean, once you actually get to that point, you're, you're doing pretty fucking well for yourself, <laughs> even if the movies fucking suck and stuff like that. But they just decided abandon ship we have to go after this audience oh wait they're not playing our game and the core audience that did make us are not playing these new games so now what so they're old fuck those yeah. people they yeah, should be buying our game old. No, i mean literally from all sides there there literally is not one facet of the entire resident evil franchise and it is a franchise in entertainment in games in comics i mean all it's all over the place they made animated movies I mean, there is not one facet of their business model where the Resident Evil franchise, in some way, shape, or form, is not being denigrated, is not being shorn down to its just most base, retarded essence. Where you've got, I mean, you got Paul W. S. Anderson, like you said, cranking out some of the most banal action films you will ever see in your life, starring his wife in fetish gear. Yeah. I mean, you got the freaking, the animated CGI movies, which I thought were dreadful. Some people like them. My editor enjoyed them because he's insane. And, uh... <laughs> I enjoyed them because I am insane. still employed by you. <laughs> and, then you and then you got, you got, you got freaking Resident <laughs> Evil Operation Raccoon City, which was just 
No, forget Resident Evil. Take Resident Evil off the freaking... Don't even have that as a tagline. One of the worst third-person shooters you could ever play in your life. What, what they should have done is they should have called it SOCOM with monsters. Or yeah. SOCOM, we wish that we were left for dead, but we aren't. So here's Resident but it, Evil. But it's not Maybe even a finished version. they need to get back version. to having you shoot black people. It's not even a finished version of SOCOM. It's like three quarters finished. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's a bad SOCOM. It's really bad whenever you can go back to the original SOCOM, the original, and you're like, wow, this is leaps and bounds ahead of what the fuck you just cranked out with a big time franchise name stuck right to it. What the fuck yeah. are you doing? Jesus Christ, at least in freaking Kill Switch, I can take cover behind objects. I mean, come the fuck on, but... I, I, I give actual orders to my squad mates. I mean, well, just a But then look story. at what they did, you know, after after all that shit. They released, you know, Resident Evil 6, which was a game that they said, we're going to go back to the roots of survival horror. What they meant was, we're going to dip our big toe in, and then we're just going to shiver and run off from that big fucking body of water. And their bright idea was to have a game that was honestly confused about what fucking genre it was and what what it was doing, period. Yeah, totally. It's it's a game that has a complete... It, it is three different games in one, and they're all pulling in different direction in different directions. One, one of the games wants to be Call of Duty Modern Warfare. The other one wants to be Uncharted. And the other one is like a terrible, terrible attempt at classic Resident Evil. Yeah. You know, it, and that's really all it is at the end of the day. And and the problem with it is that other elements from the other, you know, thirds of the game creep into the other ones. So nothing is really purely, you're not getting a pure experience no matter which path you choose or what character you're playing as, really. Well, see, there there's something else that, like, I mean, besides their, their idiotic fucking blame game bullshit, which anybody with two fucking goddamn working brain cells would be able to tell you that it's not the fans that are getting too old. Because for fuck's sake, like, before the podcast, when we were coming up with what the fuck we were going to talk about, I looked up when Resident Evil 4 had came out, which was obviously the, the biggest within the series. That shit came out in 2005. So rolling on into 2014, that's only nine years ago. You know that a lot of kids picked up that game and that was their first Resident Evil. I come across lots of people that say that that was their first Resident Evil, which I always cry heresy and I say go back and play the original four fucking titles that came before that and you'll uh, you'll be able to unearth true Resident Evil. And if, if that's the case, if those kids just started playing it, and yes, kids... If those kids just started playing it uh, about fucking nine years ago, eight, nine years ago, how the fuck are they too old? And the vast majority of people that are into it, are they're trying to say that they're like in their late 30s and in their 40s and shit. It's like that, that was 1996 when the first one came out. I assure you that those people are still interested in good games. They didn't suddenly just say, you know what, fuck gaming altogether. I don't like picking up controllers. No, if you give them a half-ass game, they're not going to buy it. Just like a young person would not want a half-ass game and not fucking buy it. <laughs> Except for Call of Duty, but we won't talk about that. But th that's <laughs> fucking easy. I, but, we, we've discussed that enough. Yeah, yeah. It, but the fact is that this is just a, a typical fucking bullshit of point the finger, and then it worries me because now I feel like that they're going to take this in some creepy as fuck, not even Resident Evil direction. I'm talking like worse than fucking five, worse than six, worse than Operation Raccoon City, making Resident Evil Gaiden on Game Boy Color look like the second coming of fucking Christ on your chest. It just worries me to death that we're going to get something even worse. Like just Well, you terrible. think about if, if they think that people like us are too old and they're shooting for younger, you know they're probably just going to hire the fucking Wayans brothers, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, they you know, play the part of, like, Rebecca and Jill. I, I hope each and every one of you had a shiver go through your spine when I said that, because <laughs> it is entirely possible at this point. You know, Resident Evil can still be salvaged. They, they just need to add one more gameplay element. Mario Party. Make it happen. Resident uh, Evil, Mario Resi Party. Resident, Resident Evil Party. Don't even Hell's don't yeah, even man. joke about that. They already put Mega Man in Smash Brothers. They could put Chris and Jill. Actually, they did put Jill in the re most recent Smash Brothers, didn't they? Or am yeah. I wrong? Now imagine was that Chris Marvel and Jill in, in Mario Party. No, that, that was Snake from Metal Gear Solid. Okay, no, I was. Th uh, never mind. Whatever. But uh, 
don't, please don't don't tempt fate is what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, I, 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 I may be I may be pretty you know saying some prophetic words here. If if, if Resident Evil Party happens, you'll know you heard you it. You'll know where phone. they got the idea. From. <laughs> At the end of the day, here's the th here's the thing. Why is Capcom complaining about this? It, really, what it is is an it's an implicit admission that they are creatively bankrupt, because. If there's no reason to complain, if they believe that they, that tomorrow they could create a new brand that was every bit as good and every bit as successful as Resident Evil has been for them, they would not be complaining about this. That's but true. they know that they are completely out of ideas. They are completely creatively bankrupt. They can't pull any rabbits out of a hat. So they have to complain about this because Resident Evil is one of the few brands that they can milk for cash right now. Well, it, it was hey, interesting because the, um, the article had brought up the fact that they've kind of been plastering the name onto lots of things that were very not game-related, such as having a, a Halloween-themed you know, um, haunted house extravaganza. I, I think that was at, what, Universal Studios or some shit? Yeah, Silent Hill did that mm -hmm. as well. And, and I... To me, one, I don't think that's all that bad of an idea because I, I think that fits. I actually think that's a very cool idea. But what they're trying to say is that they feel that Resident Evil is trying to go and put itself out there even well beyond, like, what, you know, uh, they, they want people that aren't gamers to go and see this shit. And to me, I'm like, well, aren't the movies enough for something like that? And why do you need people that don't play games to be interested in this? Because it's quite obvious that they're not going to st stick around and buy up all this shit. Like, that's just fucking common sense. It seems to me that Resident Evil is getting more and more, like, mid-1980s cartoons manufactured simply to produce dolls. Yeah. I mean, it, it is really getting to that point, but it's... I, I, I mean, look look at, Cat, like, okay, Razor Fist had mentioned earlier about how much money that they're losing. Resident Evil is one of the only things that they have left that generates money, and they can't put out a new IP because, well, they did, and it was called Remember Me, and nobody remembers it, and it just didn't happen. <laughs> I, mean, like, I see what you did there. Yeah, it's, but it's it's sadly fucking true, and I, I'm still waiting for the game to be dirt cheap to go pick it up, but it's like... That's what they do with a new IP. You know, when we beg for them to make new games, they do, and they don't tell anybody about it. They put it inside of a broom closet and like cover it up with like mops yeah. and shit. There was like there was like one gameplay demonstration at PAX one year, and then there was like I think they showed a trait. Did they even show a trailer at E3 this past year for Remember Me? I don't even remember. Honestly, I mean, I, well, it's it's I I cannot find it any funnier the fact all that this and more. Remember, you don't remember Remember, remember Me? <laughs> Does anybody remember all over anything about Remember Me? No, but I I don't recall them saying shit about it. You think the title was supposed to be like its you know campaign slogan? <laughs> Or if they figure, you know, if it fails, at least we can make some good yucks. Uh, anybody? Yucks? Want some yucks? No? Okay. <laughs> but uh, overall, it's, I mean, that, that's what they do with their new IPs. Or they take, you know, the ones that they left dormant for a long time, like Breath of Fire 6, and they throw it to the wolves. And they just, they fuck that into the dirt. So it's like, I don't, I, I don't know. I'm... I'm honestly just counting down the days and waiting for them to be bought out by somebody with any amount of sense. Anyone. I don't even fucking care. You know, like, this has happened before. Final Fantasy, anyone? <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> the exact same thing is happening with Final Fantasy. And if, if Square Enix doesn't start making cash off that, they'll be blaming the fans for being too old. I mean, <laughs> they'll be like, really oh, think so, though? I mean, fans just... not like these big girly boys and, the, and girly girls with big swords that that, that are no, it's evil. it's almost like all fashion is cyclical, and eventually people get tired of anything if you crank it and crank out too much of it. Yep. You know what I mean? Well, to me, that Final Fantasy, all, all I have to do is just kind of look at what they've done in the past and look at what they've done recently, and that's take Lightning, which is the main protagonist from Thirteen. And one of the main things that they've been really pushing is alternate outfits instead of, you know, an engrossing world, a, a really detailed story and plot and stuff like that. And characters. That's because they want to sell you DLC. They don't want to actually give you a game. <laughs> well, but the, the one thing that they're trying to sell with it is they have lightning running around wearing uh, Moogles on her tits, on her vagina and on her ass. And that's it. 
she just has a couple on her and she's good to go and she's naked like side boobing everywhere and like thighs and shit and that's what it is they just want people who write fanfics to jack off to the fucking game instead of here's a really kick-ass story like it it pains me to realize i can look up right now and see one of my all-time favorite final fantasies which is final fantasy 6 sitting right yes! beside secret yes! of Tana. both two fantastic fucking games for two completely different reasons but that's square soft when it became Square Enix, Enix unfortunately went from being a really great brand to then dragging dead fucking weight. Well, actually, both of them. I mean, I, I, I've always held that that the day SquareSoft and, and Enix merged, they turned into inexplicably the worst you know, RPG company ever. When separately they were they were two of the best. You know, and it, what I fucking feel bad for is IDOS. Because they've no. been doing nothing but doing fucking kick-ass stuff lately. Oh, dude, Ida, and... IDOS has been dragging Square along with them. Oh, <laughs> with them, you know? but yeah. the thing is, like, Square Enix just wants to fucking play the blame game just like Capcom did. Oh, and yeah. like, well, well, you know, we're not making enough money. And the only things that have been making money, which they won't fucking admit, are the IDOS games. But they want to say, oh, they, they haven't been up to snuff. Even though something like Sleeping Dogs, which we can all fucking say technically is a new IP because it wasn't fucking true crime anymore and that thing sold like a motherfucker to begin with what hit almost two million yeah for, for, for a, a new ip, IP. and one that wasn't like he heavily advertised no less that's amazing hitman hit its fucking numbers and then some tomb raider definitely hit its fucking numbers yet those fucking cocksucking little fucking weasels are gonna try to say uh, well you know if they did better well we we would be in the black and instead of red it's like no maybe if all your shit you know what we should do shit. we should release final fantasy 10 13 Three, three, ten, yeah. three. Let's let's make that. Yeah. Here, 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 yo, chaos. Do you want to do you want to go and mention that? Let's segue. Let's just. Oh, do you it. really think I have to mention it? Well, I don't know. You're you're the guy who who does that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Final Final Fantasy X three. Ew. There we go. <laughs> See. There you go. Final. Well, you're the one that's so pissed off. You tell me all about it. Uh, okay, Final Fantasy. I got some dirt on you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Final Fantasy. I. Every time that they seem to do sequels, it, it, shit gets really fucking bad. When they did one prequel on the PSP, it was really good, but the problem was it was on the PSP, so nobody played it. Now, they're like, hey, we're going to go and make Final Fantasy X3. Well, the problem with that is, even if you love Final Fantasy X, that's all good and all, but did you play X2? Because yeah, I did. It was a piece of shit. Yeah, it, oh. it was a fucking horrendous turd. I mean, fucking bad. And if you thought, it, like, I know Razor Fist it fucking loathes Final Fantasy X, don't you? Uh, yeah, it's it's next to. Well, we've no, actually, you know what? We've actually um, had conversations where we dared each other to to hate it less than the other guy. No, and people and people like to claim that Final Fantasy X was better than thirteen, and I contend that thirteen is just more of what made ten bad. Yeah, that's that's what's wrong with thirteen. They took everything shit about ten and they amplified it to like fifty. I can actually like, give like you two reasons. Makeup. I can give you two reasons why Final Fantasy ten legitimately is a better game. And one because it came before thirteen. <laughs> I mean, that's legit legit reasons. Uh, that's a legit reason. System, I mean, the, the more they make, the worse they get. The battle system was actually a battle system. And you had to think before you did some fucking actions instead of it just like an autopilot. But what was my problem with Final Fantasy X's battle system? It was streamlined to shit compared to eight and seven and all the pre all the games that had come previously. They it was like I said, ten streamlined the battle system, and by the time it got to thirteen, it was like, okay, let's streamline it to the extent where you don't even have to pick these options. You let's don't have you don't have to press a button anymore. You just watch oh. and they do shit. Yeah, they're like uh, flashy colors. That's what. What's bad though is, uh, oh, here the the other thing that Final Fantasy X has going for is it at least has one decent character, whereas Thirteen has none, zero, <laughs> zilch. Uh, Orin was the only interesting character, and uh, for the love of God, every time I I saw Titus and Waka on screen together, I wanted to rip my own dick off and beat myself to death with it. Yeah. So you know, what one of my favorite games was was Final Fantasy: The Spirits Within. That was one of the best <laughs> games they ever made. 
the, the, yes, be, bestest game. What's really sad is that movie probably would have done well if it wasn't called Final Fantasy. Yeah, it was yeah. great. You didn't have to push buttons or anything. Yeah, but that, that's, why it's almost like favorite, that's why it was my favorite game. It's it almost like a David Cage system. game. Yeah, it's the know. best battle system of all of them. Here, and, and if anybody is listening to this and you're thinking, you know, well, you guys are just hating on Square's, Square Enix and stuff, blah, 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 and Final Fantasy no, is I love the shit so, out of Square Enix, and I hate what they're doing. Well, here, how, how about take this into account. The creators of Final Fantasy, this will show you how little they give a fuck about the core product itself. They actually create the cutscenes, the CG cutscenes. They create them months and sometimes years prior to even making the game and anything around it, like the story. They're just like, okay, we'll just build around that because that looked real badass. Well, oh, yeah, no, and, and they do, it, it's even worse nowadays. I mean, you've got, everyone's noticed. Every game since Final Fantasy VIII, with the exception of Nine, has looked they make the exactly first. has looked exactly the same. All the characters look like they shop at the exact same store the 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 store that sells asymmetrical vests that have holes over the nipples and like and have tattoos inscribed on the back for some reason. And like every single game, everybody dresses exactly. And they wear the same. too many belts. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they, they have the, belts the, and buckles. Belts like, and buckles everything. everywhere. Yeah, and it's like, it, you, what they do is they let the terrible, terrible, terrible art designer of this series draw up characters and fancy clothes designs, and, and then they just say, okay, fine, we'll make a character out of that. They don't have a story to tell. They don't have yeah, That's the thing statement. is, they make the characters first, and then they go, okay, well, where do these characters live? Ah, fuck it, let's just stick them in this futuristic world. There you go. No, exactly. And it's always the same exact kind of... Oh, well, is it World. kind of futuristic? Yeah, but then they also use swords, but then there's also kind of steampunky technology. And they still ride these these yellow birds that we've been riding since the, since the very first one, so yeah. yeah. we got to have some kind of link to the very... I was going to say link to the past. I'm like, wait, no, that's actually a good game we're talking about. <laughs> um, Which actually, you know, the, the, surprisingly, the new 3DS one, that Link Between Worlds, it was pretty good, actually. I knew it. Everybody I know has played that and enjoyed the shit out of it. I, unfortunately, I, I'm still playing Pokemon, and I just got Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, so I, I still won't have time to play that. But when you, when you, play, it, when you I, play it, it, you will like it. I liken, I liken it to if someone took a look at like a, a, an advertisement for food in a magazine, you know what I mean? And the, the food always looks amazing, right? But if, if anyone's ever looked into how they actually make food look so good in these advertisements, it's because they put, like, like for example, like milk in cereal advertisements isn't actually milk, it's glue and stuff like that. <laughs> It'd be, really? no, it's true, because it, it makes it look better. Yeah, because milk it, doesn't look like milk. It shows up better on uh, on camera. It would be like if someone said, oh, that looks good. Let's replicate that exactly. And now how, how that's do they get it to, how, do they, how do they get it to pour so fast? I mean, do, do, do they just fast forward the glue falling or something? I, I don't know. But they, they it's like that, the video game equivalent of them drinking, them eating a bowl of Cheerios with glue in it. Because they're like, oh, <laughs> how, how do those, that, how, how does Mikey put that in his mouth then? How, how does Mikey like glue? Oh, no, I'm not talking about the actual video advertisements. I'm talking about in magazines and shit. Oh, like, okay, I was going to say. <laughs> photograph advertisements. Like, you, is, my, is Mikey really <laughs> eating a, a, a bowl? I was going to say, you know, while we're on the subject, I really do think that all the head honchos over at Capcom and Square Enix really do have Sipping bowls glue. of glue for breakfast. Do they eat glue? <laughs> like, I think that that's what, like, I think They're that not they having eat it glue, and I think They're that recording. they snort the glue, anything that they can. <laughs> yeah. No, but it, it is. They it, smell the glue. It just—it's okay. kind of a shame that we have two companies that were so prominent within the '90s, and then oh, suddenly, a, fun, Lee. yeah, and now they—they've fallen off so much, and they're running on fumes, like the both of them. The only reason Square Enix is still around is because of IDOS and Dragon Quest, because that's crack in Japan, and Capcom is around. Crack. Me too. I'm waiting for Dragon Quest Ten to come out here so that I can play that shit online. Yeah, I, I, really... I, I, I was 
kind of hesitant on that, but I'm I'm still going to give it a shot because I'm Fuck yeah, I'm well, gonna give it a you shot. You know, I'm old and all according to Capcom and I really like when <laughs> things don't change or at least they evolve properly. If Capcom is blaming us for being old, what what is Square blaming us for? Uh, not Square having is a blaming fashion us sense? because we're not, not looking enough? at enough fashion magazines to see what the next Final Fantasy character and what they're up to. You give it so, long enough, they'll call you xenophobic too. Well, it the thing that's fucked up is like when Razor Fist was bringing up the whole thing of like them looking like models. Like in Japan, they really do use the like Final Fantasy 15, which was technically 13 verses or what the fuck ever. They've used those characters a shit ton in Japan as models for various clothing outlets. And Lightning from Final Fantasy 13 again has been used for all sorts of things, scantily clad, no less. And it's I just don't get how Squaresoft, Square Enix, whatever the fuck you want to call them, is so hung up on the visuals of something, but doesn't realize that the visuals don't tell a fucking story at all. Like you, like yeah, they, do they supplement the story. Yeah, it, to them they're like, well, fuck the story and and fuck the battle system and fuck the world. We're just gonna make it linear. Why why go exploring whenever you can just download Moogles on tits? All right, it fuck just that. needs to look cool. That's all. That shit fucking depresses me. And we have another fucking company that is in the midst of an identity crisis because it wants to be something that it's not and then be pissed that everybody didn't like it. It's like, if we want to fucking play Call of Duty, we buy Call of Duty and play it. We buy Resident Evil, play Resident Evil, but they don't get that. Yeah, so if we wanted to buy Fashion Plate Barbie, we'd do that. But no, we, we buy Final Fantasy. What I, what I don't understand is why they have this bizarre inborn impression in their minds that... Once an audience gets to a certain point and they get old, well, new fans can't appreciate what the franchise was prior to that. Like, what the... F okay, what if the people who wrote the Bible had that same thought? Like, yeah. like, oh, shit, like, the people who read this originally really liked the Bible, but, like, nobody after this is gonna enjoy it. It's like, well, okay, but, like, that clearly isn't the case. That clearly Yeah, but happen. there's whole religions that, that, that say Old Testament is the only one, and New Testament well, is... Well, what I'm saying <laughs> is that's... The, it, clearly, it still appeals to people who are born later. I mean, use any book... I mean, for crying out loud, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, The Lord of the Rings. Like, it, it could, can you imagine if, if <laughs> the, the Lord of the Rings, publisher... unless it's told by Peter Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you imagine if the publisher of Lord of the Rings had just been like, well, shit, you know, the, we, we've hit our audience. Nobody after this is going to appreciate it. Let's stop can printing. Can you imagine if Tolkien had actually written the character Tariel? I know jack fuck all about Lord of the Rings, so yeah, that's. I it it demands too much of. We used to have a guy that would put the cricket sound, but we don't have that anymore. So you're just gonna have to make do on Asa, your own. you would have to be our guide into the world of. Um, I, I guess I will, but yeah, basically Peter Jackson with the Hobbit took a lot of fucking creative, uh, you know, freedom. He, he added characters of his own to the thing, added characters who weren't in the fucking thing into the thing. And orcs. Lots of fucking orcs. <laughs> yeah, I just recently found out that this most recent one was the second Hobbit movie. I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, and, and, it, and, and it, it... I wasn't going to say it was a steaming pile, but it was a huge letdown. See, I just didn't know because I'm old. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, no, if you were old, you, you, you would have known. You would have read it. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I, I, Capcom... Back in me. my day, we had things called books. You'd turn the pages I just, and get... All that think, information would just go into your brain. <laughs> I think what really stirs the shit on me, though, is that we have this company that is, you know, for all intents and purposes, absolutely teetering on the very edge of financial ruin. And they figured the best recourse is to toss insults at the remaining audience it has. Which yeah, would probably basically. be very They're similar. like the WWE like, logic is what it is. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, this, <laughs> this would be like Lane Bryant telling their audience they're fat. Or the Dollar Tree laughing at their customers for being poor. Yeah, yeah, this, this is pretty much like 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 you know Vince McMahon saying you're you're gonna watch this midget and you're gonna like him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, Vince it's like McMahon well, does you know, say that every time Hornswoggle comes up, we're supposed to be amused. Oh yeah, exactly. no, you you just don't like it because you're not our target audience anymore because you're not. <laughs> well, it's like you okay, like well, 
Do it all well, what, right. do you, what do you guys think? You think the young audience can't appreciate wrestling that doesn't suck? I mean, where, yeah. where do you, why do you think there were all those Macho Man Randy Savage shirts sold after he died? You think he doesn't appeal to a younger audience? Like, well, shut up. That. Can you show awesome. a younger audience fucking, you know, the Hell in the Cell match between Taker and, and, and fucking Mankind? They will appreciate old fucking school, you know, wrestling. But it, anybody that's going to run a company and have to change everything about it and the way that it functions, the way that it, it's used, everything in general that makes it what it is, every, what, 10 to 15 years, eventually you're going to be just like Capcom, lose sight of what you are and become a fucking shell of yourself. And, and that's I, why I, feminists I, are destroying video gaming. Fuck you, feminist. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is. It's, it's fucking depressing whenever they say stuff like that. And, you know, I, I, here's the thing. Okay, I'm 29. But even if I was fucking 14, I would say, why are you changing it? I really, I'd like, I'd like it this way. I like horror in my survival horror games. I do not want to play an over-the-top, action game that's supposed to be like a Hollywood blockbuster movie because I would just buy something. I'll buy Uncharted if I fucking want that. But I don't I, want I, women so, objectified in my games. Put some clothes on them, bitches. Or put Moogles on them if you're or fucking... Put on their <laughs> and then sell that as DLC. Yeah, and then tell them they'll, they'll, be, they'll be extra Gil or Zenny or whatever. The hey, fuck if you want to see Mo t Moogles on her tits, press one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's put it this way, hater nation or whatever the fuck, motherfuckers that are listening. Capcom and Square Enix, you, it, look, 2014's coming up. Get a fresh start and pull your heads out of your fucking asses and look at what made you famous. Look at what worked and realize that will continue to work for new and old fans alike. So get a fresh start. Do, do it the old way. <laughs> Well, no, look, fuck, I mean, that's that. what just it, do it well. Well, yeah. I mean, there's there's yeah, nothing exactly. new under the sun. I mean, for crying out loud, why do you why do you think peasant blouses and flare pants got so popular in the 90s? Because we're always 20 years behind. That's why, you know, because we're always looking to, to whatever the decade was 20 fucking years ago is the best thing ever. Right. Oh, it's God. Always... Does that mean the next Final Fantasy is going to look like Saved by the Bell? I hope to Christ not. <laughs> No, the next Final Fantasy is going to look like VR. Well, I don't know. If you really think about it, Zaz it's from... It's already uh, from there, Final, huh? <laughs> yeah, Final Fantasy XIII, uh, his, yeah. his, his name's Zaz. He, he kind of looks yeah. like Screech. He's got the fro. He's got a bird in his head. <laughs> wow. Saiyan. And, and if you Whenever think about they it, make the sequel, they can call it the college years, and far less people <laughs> will be interested, just yeah. like the real thing. And Snow has the blonde hair and the blue eyes. He kind of... Zach Morris, a little yep. bit. Just saying. <laughs> now we just need to get the fucking landmine cellular phone. Oh, and, and just so you know, the reason that we made this reference is because we're old, just because like Capcom <laughs> said. I remember <laughs> Saved by the Bell. I can't believe somebody else. What people should appreciate, you would not believe how much brain power it took to recall something that I don't even give a shit about. <laughs> Yeah, next you thing all should gonna... be thankful. I'm going to anyway. insult Razor Fist here. Next thing we're going to talk about, Ninja Turtles. No, no kidding. Oh, bite me. No, what... Turtles Turtles is popular again, though. They've got a new cartoon again. on Again. Uh, I like how you had to use the word <laughs> yeah, They're again. over again. It's all right. Hey, Mike, it's Mike, all you have to back. Have a teenage... Thank you. Thank you for bringing the Turtles back. Well, Dude. my kid got to have a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Christmas just like I did at the same exact age and got the place at that, the same exact age. Wait. Well, hey, Alpha, uh, I'm, I'm guessing your kid is a boy then because uh, my, my two girls, I ended up with fucking ponies and I hate you. Why were you fucking <laughs> I wish I could have given my kids a Ninja Turtle Christmas. Instead, I have to give them a My Little Pony Christmas. Why didn't I have a boy? <laughs> Alpha Omega Sin, I saw those pictures, man. You, you, did you need, like, a crane and a jib to put that together? Dude, no shit. That thing was a fucking nightmare. Like, I'm not yeah, kidding. Yeah, I guess it's nap time. Like, I, I posted a picture on my Facebook of uh, the Ninja Turtle set for everybody listening and not knowing what the fuck we're talking about. But 
the Ninja Turtle playset, which stomps all the fuck over the one that I grew up with and we all grew up with, this thing is 40 inches tall. And, like, it's, like, the same size as, like, small children. And it's like an Ikea set. Like, you... They wow. just give you a big box of, of parts. I counted. It was close to 60 parts. Did it come with an Allen wrench? So if you'd have had this one as a kid, you'd have totally orgasmed all those years ago, huh? Damn straight. And I also <laughs> would have destroyed it in half the time. So <laughs> it, I'm kind of glad that I didn't. But it, it, it does make me happy to go and show that this is a fine example of things that are old still work for future generations because... He geeked the fuck out just like I did at his age getting the Ninja Turtle van and all the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle characters, both good guys and bad guys, and the playset and all that shit. So it, take it from the fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Capcom, and Square Enix. This shit will fucking work for years to come if you're, you know, well, smart. At, at least at least until Michael Bay comes and shits on it. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sad now. <laughs> Good thing he's expensive, so it low, lowers the likelihood of such things taking place. Uh, anyway, um, Alpha Omega said that was a lovely story. Thank you, you being a, a good father and doing other things. But uh, speaking of dirt. Uh, fans, you don't know this. A lot of you think really highly of Alpha Omega and He's a good, upstanding citizen, does good things for his family. <laughs> this son of a bitch <laughs> swindled an American retailer on Boxing Day. Would you care to explain yourself, Mr. Omega Sin? <laughs> yeah, Boxing um, Day. Yeah, you got very, <laughs> Boxing so, uh, Day being very important in Canada. Almost as important as Moose Day. Come on. Now, you, you got to hey, understand it's almost, from... It's almost as important right after as Maple as Syrup Day. day. Um, Canadian Bacon Day. Well, a Boxing <laughs> they call, Day they call is that big amp. In, Boxing Day is big in Canada, but I I'm completely unaware of its existence. And I just like Boxing Day. I guess this is just something that Nintendo is doing, just Nintendo. So I'm like, and I saw that they had their own little website for it. Keep in mind, it didn't say anything about it being Canada only. And at Target, which they have Targets in Canada, and I live in Pennsylvania, so I'm close enough. So fuck you guys. Well, <laughs> Pennsylvania well, looks to, like. To be fair, dude, when I heard Boxing Day, I thought they were talking about you know Anderson Silva's leg being broken. But yeah, that'd be Breaking Day. That that, <laughs> or, that that thing just flopped about like Psycho Sid's leg, minus the <laughs> turnbuckle jump. But um, I I went to Target to try to get a stack of DS games because for fourteen ninety nine, that's a hell of a deal. And I went there. They had no clue what the fuck I was talking about. They, none of their games were marked down. And I thought that this was a mess up on their part. So I went to a separate Target. Same exact thing. So I decided I'd try my luck at Best Buy because they were also one of the listed retailers. And I went there and I had them price match all of my 3DS games to $14.99 when I showed them my phone. I was like, well, see, Nintendo's advertising it over at Target. So you guys should... You know, do that, and sure enough, they did. So I got a stack of uh, 3DS games. They price matched it, and you bought it for 15 bucks. <laughs> yeah, dude, uh, I'm gonna can, fucking try that now. Canada only. The fuck you say? No, go to what, Best Buy. The best, part, the best part is if you go to the website, there's nothing on the thing that says Canada. It just says Boxing Day. So anybody yeah. who, who like me you doesn't did know what it is. Dot ca. Wow. Yeah, I can't imagine. A... I can't imagine why Best Buy has almost gone out of business like five times in the last year. <laughs> imagine. Well, hey, it's not dot .ca, dude. Discount. It's BoxingDay.Nintendo.com. There's no CA in there, so even that won't won't you know won't work. <laughs> all, all I know is that it, it it worked out gloriously. The downside is that it will end on the thirty first. So yep. This, so so everybody it, hit the best buys here. right now. Show them the ad. Un unless this isn't uploaded by then, then uh, that sucks for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I swindled them. There's going to be like a Best Buy representative knocking on your door say saying, M Mr. Sin, we need you to return those other things. Yes, you know. <laughs> you can pry them from my cold, dead hands. <laughs> Yeah. So how does, it feel? How, does, well, now, how does it feel to wreck the American economy? Uh, I, I honestly think that the... Uh, we were, I, we were, we'd almost recovered, and then you took Best Buy for $35, and now here we are. Well, they, they had it coming. I mean, that's how I look at it, you know. They, they, what are you going to do? Going to have an anchor baby next? 
Well, you know, it, he's planning to launch a new healthcare website. <laughs> you know, if you'd, have, if you'd have tried that in China, they wouldn't have given you that deal. Well, it's China. They'd be like, oh, filthy American, get out. They're, they're incapable of giving you a deal in China. Yeah, they would have found you a threat to national security. That's a good point. You know, it, and, well, fuck China. It doesn't really matter. That, you, could, you could slip Uh-oh. under doors and stuff. Hey. Hey, you just said fuck China. Now now the Chinese are going to boycott hate bit podcasts. They Wait already are. Yeah, I was going to say, they won't air us in China. Uh, they already pirate our asses. <laughs> That's a good point. And they also sell, like, really shitty uh, little action figure sets that they call us the Avenger Justice League. And Shrek's in there and one of the Transformers in addition. We're all just hell. And, and, they, and they call you Arpha Omega Sin. Yeah. <laughs> Razor Feast. I love him. Laser, no, he's Laser Fist. <laughs> Dude, I, I like the fact that we have, like, Earth-13 versions of ourselves now. That's pretty awesome. That's true. You're, you're, you're chaos. Uh, <laughs> no, Satan, actually, that, you know what that means, of course? It means Sated Magnus was the product of a Superboy punch. That's what was going on. Ah. <laughs> well, so actually, my name translated into Chinese comes out Marvin Impelitary for some reason. What? What? <laughs> Hey, Impelitary is a great band, and screw you. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) Uh, Who else can we piss off? Uh, Janet Uh, Reno. I tell you, fucking Janet Reno. uh, (laughs) Oh, no, no, never mind. Careful, careful. Am I I, I tap dancing on a landmine? I've got to say, be careful. (laughs) She'll come and fuck you with her big penis. I I thought thought Katie Couric was coming after me with her big floppy penis. No, I'm pretty. Her, pretty sure she is the How many bitches are you aware of with big floppy penises? Because I need to know who's going to be coming after me because you said so. I was going to say, man, it's it's a it's now a triple. Anita Sarkeesian. Match. Yeah, <laughs> they're gearing up. They're gearing up for the big tag team match: Rachel Maddow and Anita Sarkeesian versus Janet Reno and Janet Napolitano in the 15 foot high steel cage. <laughs> and it's going to be refereed by Ann Coulter's legs. Oh God. <laughs> Oh, oh and, and by the way, if you want all the exclusive content, you just watch on The View. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> Little did they know. And Jenny McCarthy will try to say something smart and fail miserably, like always. Every, every time they, they are laughing and then there's, you know, one of those awkward, like, ah, and then the awkward silence, I always expect one of them to turn to the other three and just say, wow, we're cunts. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know the cameraman yeah, but... and all the backstage hands are doing that every single <laughs> other fucking I don't, I see, see, that's funny. I don't really watch The View. I've seen it once or twice, but I do. I think I've the experienced... cameraman is actually asleep. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> or I mean that's what I do. If, if, I was hired, if I was hired to do that job, I'd just turn the fucking camera on and take a nap right there. You know? Well, you have to. If you zoom in too close and you give away all the secrets of the universe. <laughs> if you zoom in too close, then you get to see all what all of uh, Ozzy Osbourne's money has really been going towards, and it's not pretty. So, got to run from that. If you oh, zoom so in too close, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's not pretty. It's named Sharon Osbourne, and it's absolutely ugly. Yeah. If you yeah. zoom in too close, you get Whoopi Goldberg's, you know, anal warts. I don't know. I, I like to think that if you zoom in really close, you get to see what the next sequel to Predator truly could look like. And it's unfortunate. <laughs> Or even uglier, Sharon Sharon Osbourne's daytime talk show. She Remember has that? a daytime talk show? She, she had one, like, six years ago or something. Oh, guys, you're making me sick. <laughs> <laughs> I, would rather, I would rather talk about Tony Danza's talk show than Wait, Sharon Osbourne's talk he show. Has a to- he has a talk show? I think so. I saw it one time. Wait, so That's how good it was. The- it was on that one time. What? Why do celebrities either have... Um, reality shows or talk shows? Because this... they need to remain a celebrity somehow. That's just frightening, though. Like, who? Why do we have YouTube videos? By the way, subscribe to the Yell Chaos channel on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> and to Ace Solieri and to Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. I knew I was here for something. Everybody, unsub me now. I mean, the other. Be thing. careful what you wish for. No, they probably will. They've done it before. 
All right. Anyway, they, and, and they always uh, tell you they're gonna unsub before they. I'm. I don't like your channel anymore. I'm unsubbing. Yeah, that's that's the most important thing. You need the public acknowledgement of you making yes, a given decision. Exactly. <laughs> that's because I'm eating think... cereal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna There's... show you my dissatisfaction by telling you that I am unsubbing you, good sir. I'm eating a bowl of glue with Cheerios. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's that's what it translates into in Chinese. Oh. <laughs> and all the Chinese just unsubbed all our channels. I know what's going on. Speaking, well, right. speaking of uh, speaking of Chinese, just Chinese disdain, bots, don't worry. <laughs> speaking of Chinese disdain, Sony uh, are interestingly enough are dropping PS3 online support. Now you see how I segued that in there. You see what I did there? Huh? Right, I made, I made, you guy. Yeah, I made something <laughs> racist into something almost cute. Um, anyway, apparently Sony is dropping... The Razor Fist made me talk about this. Sony Sony dropping PS3 online support for Gran Turismo 5 and Resistance. Now, Razor Fist, he was, he was angry. And I don't know why, because when I say it, it sounds nice. A rump. A rump. <laughs> well, but but when Razor Fist nice. says it, it sounds like the Riot Act. So, Razor Fist, well, look, why, is, why is this off? I'm, I've had it up to seven feet above my head with these companies running around, making games, and then two years later... Killing the online support for them because I contend and I believe one day a lawyer will stand before a court and argue this and the companies will be made to change their ways. But I, I strongly believe that it's false advertising because you're as, at least as long as you're writing it on the package that you can play it online, it's false advertising when you remove that feature. You are literally reaching in to the game case of the game that I purchased and you are removing a, a chunk of the fucking game. All right. That, In many that cases, is something. A lot of the game. And that is something that, especially if it's a Battlefield game. <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, for crying out loud, it's it, it, actually speaking of Battlefield and multiplayer, that game not only is single player disc two, when you go to the main menu on the game, it's the second option after multiplayer. Like, that holy fuck. Exactly. Like way to just <laughs> communicate unequivocally where your priorities lie, well, but it, but it just makes me mad. I mean, EA and uh, I know EA Sports has done this with all their games. They'll stop supporting the previous year's game as soon as the new one comes out online. I think that's bullshit. Uh, all these companies are doing this, and it's it's really pissing me off. Uh, it's one thing when it's PSN and it's a free online service but i mean they do this with xbox live too and that's fucking ridiculous especially when you're paying for the service and, you know and I mean? the thing is the, you have to keep in mind that these games are still being sold like sony's still selling like a, a fucking trilogy of uh like a three pack of the resistance games meaning you can still buy brand new the first game the second game and obviously the third game because the third game isn't fucking old so you can get all three of these still yeah, you won't be able to use the online components of all three of them. And that's that's where I always look at them. Like, if you know that down the line that you may not be able to offer this feature anymore, why the fuck can't you just make a LAN option? Because that's then you could still technically, you know, do that. But now oh, because LAN, LAN is for old people, just like Resident Evil. Oh, yeah, fuck, I forgot. Because of the <laughs> fact that I'm 8,000 years old and obviously not relevant to the gaming market, Shame and my ideas you. would actually take some time for them to, you know, make. Fuck that's all why, that noise. This is why a lot of people don't realize this. That's actually why Alpha grew a beard. is So that he could denote more easily, he could give a visual cue of how old he actually is. He's eventually going to turn into Santa Claus, is what I'm saying to you. <laughs> Dude, it, well... It, you want to know what's even better? Just little, tiny, incy bitsy has nothing to do with the rest of the conversation mini rant. I want everybody to fucking understand something. Every fucking time there is some empty-headed asshole out there that sees a dude with a fucking beard, or a bitch with a beard, I, it depends on what part of the country you're in, sits <laughs> somebody with a fucking beard and then says, oh, so you like... Or, or like a guy on Duck Dynasty? I want to fucking murder your family in cold blood in front of you and on top of you. 
I fucking you know what's funny you. is I, I got that comment about you. I hope you get raped at a fucking zoo by every single animal there in a goddamn conga line. Go fuck yourselves. Go fuck that show. Have that show then turn around and reciprocate said fucking and die. Anyway, continue. But yeah, I got that comment twice this month, so I can I can totally sympathize. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. In Arizona? Yeah, the, the the whole Duck Dynasty comment. You yeah, guys I got get A and E in Arizona. Yeah. Oh, okay. Why wouldn't we? What, what, you what, don't what, get what daylight savings, so I figured I don't know. I mean, we're still part of the United States. This isn't Puerto Rico, you know. I don't. You, pff, not what I heard. <laughs> but and back back to the whole online thing. It, there's so many games that do that. Like I've I've bought games. That, oh god, what the fuck is the 1360 game that I have that I cannot fucking play whatsoever? I know I've got it over uh, there. Sonic Chrome and Hounds. Mario at the Olympics. Um, Chrome Hounds is a game that you cannot play whatsoever ever because it's online only, but the game doesn't say that. And I bought the game used like two or three years ago, and the, the servers were already shut down. Yep. I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, what? What the fuck, man? Like, so now you have a worthless box. I have a fucking, I have a practice mode and a training mode. That's it. Like, that's that's all it gives you, and that makes me so sad because some of these games truly have cool online modes, like Brutal Legend. I always want to play that online. Can you? Fuck no. You have to. Like, if they do not have PC counterparts, you're completely up shit creek. Like, it's so fucking depressing that they do this fucking crap, and it's idiotic. And, and it's and it's full-on false advertising. It is. It just pisses me off because it's, it's right there. It's on the box. And not only are the retailers complicit, because, I mean, GameStop, do they have any, you know, are there any labels on it saying, hey, you're not going to get this feature? I mean, they already got sued for not telling people that they wouldn't be able to play multiplayer unless they bought a pass with Call of Duty. I mean, we, we already know that happened. Why the heck are they have they not been sued for selling games with online components that full on don't have online anymore? There are no servers up any longer. And it's written right there on the package. Yeah. So. And that's honestly just imagine if you start applying this kind of concept to a shitload of other things out there, you know, let's go and apply this to movies, let's go and apply this to books where they're taking out, like, chunks of the movie, they're taking out chunks of the pages, you know, let, let's apply it to, to fucking music. Okay, yeah, we'll take out, like, three of the tracks and not tell you. Like, well, I thought I bought the entire album. Oh, no, you you didn't. You thought you did, but you didn't. Yeah. No, like, you buy a book and they take out three chapters. Yeah, I mean, f fuck all that. I mean, and the thing is, it would be unacceptable then. So why is it acceptable here? Is it because nobody's raised enough ruckus over this, or what the hell? It's because they're slowly trying to wean us off of owning our own fucking property, is what it is. They, yeah. they, I'm sure they've got some kind of legalese bullshit where, oh, you don't really own the games that you own. You, you physically own the disc, but we can take the video game back anytime we <laughs> want bullshit. I mean, that's really where we're headed with all this digital distribution horse shit. And people back are in my legally... day, when you used to buy a game, you would get the game, and it would say two players in it, and all you had to do was have another controller. And a friend. And a friend. I don't know. A friend is a pretty tall order these days. Yeah, it, it truly is. But it's, I mean, that that is really all that you needed. And it's kind of sad to think that I can go over to my NES games and plug one in, and then I can play Double Dragon 2 in two-player mode. Oh, Obviously, yeah, true, right. but you can't yeah. fucking play your Fantasy Star online on the Dreamcast. No, and, which is a shame. Yeah, that, that, one, that one you can only play the, yeah, that one you can only play the, the, Single player mode now. Ooh, fun! I was gonna say, yeah, can't you um like on GameCube you can do the four player split screen, can't you? Oh yeah, I think you can do that. But that's uh, either way, and that's one of the things. I'm like, why can't we just have that? Especially with how big TVs are now compared to you know back in our day, because we're fucking old as dirt. Um, <laughs> split screen was fucking horrible. Dude, when I first played Resident Evil 1, whenever I died, I'd throw my controller at the screen. Yeah, now I was, I was, I was asleep. Dude, now I was playing away. Speaking of split screen, I was playing uh, the Perfect Dark HD re-release, which I actually am enjoying quite a bit because they didn't fuck with too much. 
But uh, I was I was playing a little of that, and I was like, oh, I'll do my online multiplayer. And I clicked on multiplayer, and it was like split screen. I was like, oh. <laughs> it was like it was like seeing an old girlfriend you thought had died. You know. You job. Yeah, and you're and you're kind of like, damn, you're actually pretty hot. I know. You need to this hit is this amazing. <laughs> And Razor it, fist is, is an old fart. That you, you, well, yeah, but consider in fact that we all have rickety bones and need prescribed medication to be able to get our fucking units up. Well, guess that won't be happening. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> that it's, it, it is kind of sad that one of the main fucking things that, you know, is actually a selling point for games is being taken away over a duration and sometimes a very, very, very short duration. I'm talking like within the same fucking year that a game is released. They take it out and that that's okay. Yet the game's still being sold brand new, but right on the back, just like Razorfist says, it's it's still there, plain as day. But you know They'll like, probably they sell the it. they'll probably sell the online support as DLC. <laughs> I, I can honestly see that. So you want that back? Okay, ten bucks. Phony <laughs> Yeah, I, I would. I could totally see somebody like Ubisoft and Activision doing some shit like that. Shady motherfuckers. Because you know, oh, there's yeah. a handful of dumb motherfuckers that would fall for it. Oh yeah, and I mean, if it was Electronic Arts doing it, they'd just be like, "You have to sign over your kid." I'm dead serious. Your kid. <laughs> and if it's not your kid, you go kidnap a fucking kid. We need. Yeah, they better kid. be able to fucking dig. Yeah, that's uh, that. Some fucking Elizabeth Bathory shit over Electronic Arts, and you know it's true. <laughs> Except for it's it's John Madden. That's how he's saying about it. How, how is in that kid over here? And we're gonna make him. How dead. are they still in business? I I, I mean, did, didn't their shares fall to like below ten bucks? If you got to think about how fucking stupid people are, if they're stupid people, Electronic Arts is still gonna be churning out billions. I mean, weren't weren't, weren't they considered junk junk bond status already? I just consider them junk, but I mean... No, it's true. Good. They they were downgraded to junk status. Uh, Sony yeah. was downgraded to junk status, and so EA was... They fell below the minimum amount to be um, listed on the stock exchange. And I Which don't is know if ten, $10 a share. share. I yeah, don't think they still... ask them, they'll call them high-yield stocks. I, I think today, that I, I still think they're still not... They haven't been reinstated on the stock exchange. You know exchange. what I say we do? I say that we pull our money together and we buy a shit ton of stock in electronic arts and then shut them down. <laughs> Everything. Just shut them down because we'll be like, well, we, we own a vast majority of you because, well, you're you're worth jack shit. Yeah, because I can buy and sell you all day and night. Yeah. <laughs> Tell that Madden kid to get my fucking drink. <laughs> we, we, can, we can make a profit. We can, out of there. we can buy buy them at 10 cents a share, sell them for 11 cents a share, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, eventually <laughs> we'll make a buck. So pretty yeah. soon, <laughs> you'll see one badge over another. It could happen. And, and, and if you guys want to help Square, out, Square. feel free. Then we can sell it to Squaresoft so we can see them do, do <laughs> fun <laughs> things to electronic art stuff. We'll buy Square Enix and tell Enix to go the fuck away. We'll tell Enix, hey, you're free now. You're free. <laughs> go, Enterprise, boy, you're go, free. Go, Into go the release. woods with you. Go release Dragon Quest 213. I, I feel bad for Enix because it's kind of like a, like, if anybody's ever seen the movie Basket Case, well, it, Squaresoft is kind of like what's inside the basket, and Enix is like the poor motherfucker having to carry a rather deformed, megalomaniacal brother <laughs> that's going around killing people. So yeah, <laughs> but uh, that's that's essentially what Squ Square Enix is to me. Basket Case. Uh, if I could buy Enix off of Square, I, I would totally re-release Evo, The Search for Eden. If I could buy anything, I'd buy Capcom, and then i treat it right, and I would be looked at as a savior and as a king. Would you bring Mega Man back? Uh, I would I would go back to the dude who fucking made it, the, which is exactly what the fuck Capcom should be doing, and I'd kiss his fucking ass and say I'm sorry. Because, well, and, I, and I would tell him here, you, you don't you don't have to make Mighty Number no. Nine. Oh no, I, I know. I'd be like, here, make Mighty Number no. Nine. That's fine. No, That's fine. make Mighty Number no. Nine, but fire that feminist cunt. Oh yeah. Oh no, I I put that bitch into a fucking cannon and I bullet bill her directly into a goddamn volcano. She'd be done. <laughs> yep. Yep. No okay. agenda here whatsoever. Absolutely. Then, then Alpha. Then, then Alpha. Oh, King, my King. <laughs> you go do that. Now, I guess 
it's, we've come to the point in the show where Razor Fist, I think, is drawing up papers to sue Sony for false advertising. Yes. So, well, then how's that coming? The entire time. <laughs> it, it's pretty good. I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna have Johnny Cochran's ghost look over it a little later. There you go. If, that's, if you're gonna call anybody, that's the guy to call. Damn straight. <laughs> anyway, we're getting towards the end of the show, and you know what usually comes at the end of the show? Somebody I won't say who usually goes on a big harangue about something that's upsetting him. But since we're towards the end of the year, why not everyone bitch and harangue about what's upsetting them? So, Mr. Fist, how was 2013 to you? It was really, really shitty. It was pretty much the worst year in a long time. I would say it was the worst year in gaming since 2009, maybe. It was It was pretty bad. It was pretty unbearable. Uh, there was, I literally, I was telling you guys earlier, I was drawing up like plans I was planning for my next episode. And I was thinking like, usually around this time of year, I do the top five turns of 2011, 2013, whatever of, of the year. Right. And I thought, well, you know what? I have a lot, I had a lot of positive reviews this year for some reason. Uh, a lot of them were retro reviews though. So that that'll explain that. <laughs> I, I had a lot of positive reviews. Why don't I do the top five best games of 2013? And so I managed to get my hands my, my claws on a uh, list of all the games that were released in 2013. And uh, I swear by God and gentle Jesus, I could not locate five adjacent good fucking games for 2013. I was like, awesome, Blood Dragon and TMNT <laughs> out of the shadows. Uh, like, I literally, it ran out of steam that quick for me. There was nothing good released this year. It was un fucking believable you know I, I mean bioshock infinite a lot of people enjoyed i had a little hands-on time with it i never actually played it from beginning to end in the interest of full disclosure uh which is why i didn't do a review of it but it, it didn't tickle me in my no-no zone it was all right i didn't i didn't think it was amazing it certainly wouldn't be on one of my top 10 or top five of uh, 2013 lists and gta 5 i mean it was a good game i guess it would have to be on the list i suppose but it's like, I could not find five games that were great this year. And that really pretty much says it all for me. There was just jack and shit this year that was released. And a lot of the good stuff was re-releases of games that were really good from like two years ago. Like the Deus Ex uh, Director's Cut was released for PS3 and Xbox 360 this year. And that's like, I mean, Jesus Christ. Like the game industry, you can you can hear the spoon scraping the bottom of the barrel. Some some CEOs just like, man, come on! I think there's something. I, I think there might be some beans down in the sub basement below the barrel here. Let's do that. Like it's just, I, I 2013 is absolutely nothing to look back on. There's no reason to. That's that's my contention. It was a shit year. It was one of the worst gaming years on record. I I thought it was absolute trash. Conversely, I thought 2012 was you know it was it was pretty friggin bad but there were a few bright spots here and there right like I, I didn't think 2012 was that unbearable 2013 on the other hand holy fucking shit and i went on record as saying i didn't think 2012 was that bad either but fuck this year fuck it in the ass with a rusted salad fork with oh fuck it fuck it indeed ah uh, wow good for you yeah. Alpha omega sin how was 2013 for you my man you know, I was sitting there trying to figure out what old games came out, because uh, I'm one of those people, I always forget months and years of game releases and shit and have to go and look it up. It's so, called Alzheimer's disease. Yeah, it's it's called, you know, what Capcom said, I'm fucking old and can't remember shit. But So I'm sitting there looking through, and I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to try to at least name off some things that I liked, because the year had some shit that came out that I actually enjoyed. Um, golly jeepers, let's see, uh, all right, none of those, um, let's scroll down, oh, Sly Cooper, Thieves in Time, I did like that a lot, <laughs> um, and I, I'm a big Sly Cooper fan, so it, Sly Cooper, Thieves in Time was pretty fucking cool, so yay for that, uh, let's see, where are we going now, we're still scrolling, this is not good, <laughs> shit, um, hold on, uh, uh, I never played that actually. Oh, Tomb Raider. I did like Tomb Raider a lot. Tomb Raider was quite good. So yes, we we have that. So Tomb Raider, haha. Uh, Lego City Undercover. I don't give a fuck. It was pretty damn fun. It's actually still my favorite Lego game. 
Um, I put it up there with Lego Batman 2 and Marvel Lego games. Uh, unless you ate old Lego games, yeah, what the fuck ever. But I, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, good stuff to be had. Um, not going to talk about Resident Evil 6. Uh, that was on Windows, by the way. <laughs> uh, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Uh, so far, pretty damn good. Bioshock Infinite, I haven't played a lot of, but I, I have enjoyed what I've played so far. Um, fuck me running. Now I'm in April and June. Ooh. Ah. It, and keep in mind, yeah, it, if anybody thinks, oh, yeah, you guys do some of this stuff, you know, and it's, it's like, uh, definitely all scripted. Fuck you, I'm scrolling down on Wikipedia right now. <laughs> and reading. And I'm, I know I'm going past shit, by the way, and I could really give a fuck less because if there's ever a day that I'm professional, then by all means, that's when I flatline and go away. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm really trying here, folks. I seriously am. Uh, fuck. God damn it. Come on. Throw something at me here. Anything. Uh, oh, Deadly Pre Premonition Director's Cut. Yes, it's re-released. Fuck you, I'm desperate. Um, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, which was, uh, mentioned, and that game is absolutely fucking amazing, and a you have not played it, you really should. You owe it to yourselves. It's honestly one of the best first-person shooters ever. And I'm not even saying that just to fucking make it sound better than it is. It's genuinely fucking awesome. Um, yeah, and I'm sick of scrolling now. There we go, okay. So anyway, I know that there's other games. I'll have to go more in-depth at some other point. But yeah, this year is just lacking by comparison, which is ironic because we had two console releases this year. And then again, just like with many other console releases, there isn't a whole lot to go and get at the beginning of it. And somebody might say, that's pretty stupid. Didn't you buy a console? Fuck you. I want to actually buy a console at, at launch just once. Just once. So I did. But anyway, yeah, I'm just ho looking forward to 2014 and always hoping for the best, despite the fact I'm a pessimistic piece of shit. So, there you go. That's, well, that's 2013, I don't know. And you have a beard, and you're on Duck Dynasty. Yeah, and, and, and Duck <laughs> Dynasty, and that one motherfucker, I don't know his name because I don't know anything about the show, isn't on there because he apparently said, like, terrible shit, even mind. though he was reading from the Bible. I don't fucking know. Uh, how about this? <laughs> fuck the Bible, fuck Dynasty, and fuck all these people that are absolutely and utterly fucking offended by everything that's said. You're all a bunch of bitches, and you all suck dick. Fuck bitches it. and hoes and shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a hard pipe-hitting motherfucker, as Ron <laughs> said in Anchorman 2, which was one of my highlights of this year. So, yay. Wow, and Anchorman 2 happened, what, like three days ago? Shit. Yeah. Yeah, and it's and it's on Blu-ray, so it's going to be on Blu-ray, so it's going to be the killer app for the PS4, like Talladega Nights. For, for <laughs> oh, shit, right? <laughs> That's how it's going to roll. It's going to yeah. be the best game ever. It's going to be all awesome in voice control for people that run their fucking PS4 through their Xbox One. I, I, every time I see that, I do get a fucking giggle. They're like, Wii U on Xbox One! And then it's just nothing but fanboys arguing. I'm like, man, you motherfuckers are just sheep and then some. It's fucking. You guys just like cables. <laughs> these, these, are the, these are the guys that had the hard on for the Sega 32X. It's all cables. I love to plug things in. <laughs> There's something, plug very, in. there's something very phallic and disturbing about that whole situation. Pl just <laughs> plug it in cables all day. I know. Especially, especially with the 32X because it had to dock on top of another thing. I know. Don't forget. I mean, don't forget. You're talking about guys that don't get to stick things into places that often. <laughs> so they, they really take advantage. This is important. This is important shit to these people. You, know, you have no idea. Well, you got to keep in mind, like, Back whenever this, uh, whenever the 32X first came out, like some of the advertising that they had for it, which for the life of me, I cannot find, even though it's on my desktop, which is littered with bullshit right now from editing. But um, yeah, they, they basically had talked about um, the 32X was supposed to be a, like a metaphor for uh, the consoles having sex and it was supposed to be funny. So yeah, you knew where Sega was going. And I missed their marketing. Holy fuck, was it good. Uh, <laughs> good times. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, that that was 1993, way back here in 2013. And that was that was a couple years before Resident Evil, so you know we are older than the earth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cartridges and shit. Uh, according to Capcom, that like oh wait no, I I still 
I know people that played Sweet Home as an import. So they're even older than the planet itself. That's Nerds. Even... Yeah. <laughs> you import Japanese RPGs, fucking nerd. <laughs> But anyway, 2013 wasn't that bad of a year in in, in my view because this year well, we yeah, had the, bit, hmm? the Wii U started getting games. Oh yeah, I know. Good well, not, not just that. Now, Razor Fist, you don't know this because you're not into the you know the handheld front. But the handheld front was where it was. Well, not Sony's. Well, no, it, handheld. it was totally where it was at. I mean, this year we had the very I was. <laughs> we had the very excellent Fire Emblem Awakening this year. Fans, yeah. We, in we February, had, we got it on opening night. <laughs> we did, we did. We also had uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, which a lot of people scoffed at and turned out to be the game to have throughout the summer. The, I think we had the, the, new, the new Zelda game, which kicks ass. The, the, which I've heard. I haven't opened it yet. but uh, Link Between uh, Worlds. Buy it. Buy it, motherfuckers. Jump into that, you know. That's why everyone, everyone should. And also this year we got the uh, the level five um, black box games for those of you unaware, which was uh, Arrow Porter, uh, Liberation Maiden, Crimson Shroud, uh, Animal Crossing, and we got Animal Crossing, the Starship <laughs> Damry. Um, yeah, just some blockbuster type Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon. Oh, just we some... got uh, even though it's not on a handheld, but I I do have to include Super Mario 3D World because Super that's, Mario 3D World that, uh, that game's amazing. Yeah, Nintendo a game did that didn't... well for itself. Huh? Nintendo did pretty well this oh, year. Oh, I think I think they did. Except financially. Well. <laughs> well, 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 we'll see. I mean, <laughs> they did so well that they broke the fucking eShop, so who knows? <laughs> but um, you know, and a game that that got nothing. No one said jack shit about this game except for me, which was Game & Wario on the Wii U. I don't know. No one else got a hold of that. I was the only fucking guy who bought this game, apparently. Uh, yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. And unlike unlike any other game I've ever played before, it's just weird and out there. And is it a good game? Mm, probably not. It's depending. a WarioWare game. What were you expecting? Uh, well, but that's exactly it. You know, it, it, it was something different. And so for me, 2013... You know, in the on the gaming front, was pretty decent overall. I, I I'll call it a wash, if you will. But um, and hey, Salieri, how did how did the year 2013 treat you? Oh God, fuck this year. <laughs> this year. This year blew so hard, all my Nintendo cartridges work. I understand that Pistos A came back to live with you. Things are that bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pistos A had to come out of his pineapple, and he had to sell his his uh, his spaceship. <laughs> well, you know, the, that's, the, that's, the pineapple that's hard thrusters, times. The pineapple thrusters each went for ninety nine cents a piece. Oh wow! Well, that's that 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 that's hard times. But yeah, my channel fell wow. apart. I got uh, <laughs> people took took whatever I said so to heart and hated it so much that they decided to harass the everlasting fuck out of me. Oh, I thought I thought they were just like unsubscribing from you. Uh, I wish, uh, if only they had just done that. But yeah, they've done things that I'd rather not really talk about. But yeah, this this year fucking sucked. This year sucked. It sucked. Sucked. And we didn't even get the freaking AVGN movie. I've been waiting for that fucking thing since 2011. It's 2014 already, nerd. Are you going to release that movie or what? Oh, be been... careful. They'll all jump down your throat. And, it's funny. It. It's funny. You're, I, I, I was I was panning the idea of that movie from day one, and I'm probably the only one who wants to watch it anymore. <laughs> yeah, because everyone else saw it. Well, well they saw the freaking trailer. <laughs> yeah, is, hopefully they'll show it in the Disney Channel. Which is still to date the only thing he's released on the movie. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Dark. That came out in 2013, so I've got three games now. <laughs> hey, there we go. Woo! <laughs> oh, uh, here I can add in uh, DuckTales Remastered. Okay, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that's oh. but that, that, that game was awesome to begin with, and it'll be. It'll oh, I, actually, you know what? I I haven't actually talked about this because I I literally just got it, and then I beat it the same exact day that I got it, which it's a short game, but um, it's uh Castle of Illusion, the remake. It's it's very very good. I love the original and the remake is just as good. I like all the extra stuff that they added too. But it's 
just like DuckTales Remastered, just every bit as... You like how the Resident Evil fan base from 1996 is too old, but they're making (laughs) DuckTales Remastered from 1989? Yeah, we're not not too old to play that, huh? Yeah. Too old to play that. I mean, this this is... I mean, who who the fuck would play DuckTales Remastered unless they saw the original DuckTales? No and shit. The original. Uh, well, there there is one thing. I, uh, when I was talking about the TMNT Christmas that we had, I also snuck in a box set of uh, Tailspin and Batman the Animated Series because I was like, here you go, grow up, right? Well, actually, Batman is a little more understandable because he watches all that show on Netflix. But I was like, no, you have to watch. Batman the animated series because everything else just pales in comparison. Shit's awesome. <laughs> no, but at 2013, I mean, there, I can honestly say like Nintendo had a really good 2013. Ironically, even though like every gaming site was doing their fucking damnness to take a shit on them as hard as they could, they're like. So well, well, that's because they're Nintendo. You're supposed to try to shit on the king. But as soon as like, if Nintendo went fucking third party, they'd be licking their fucking boot heels as much as they possibly could. Of but course, it, it's just fucking. It's that, that was fucking... that was a big talking point in 2013. Nintendo going third party, and that's the dumbest fucking idea I've ever heard of. If you've got something and you've got it exclusive, and there's only one place to get it, you have a stranglehold on your market. Quit pretending like you know. That's a ridiculous notion. It really is. Motherfuckers like to stir the pot, though. They they want to see that shit happen. But I say, fuck them. You know, if they can't fucking like something for what it is, then whatever. All I know is, I just... Look, it's it's the same game industry. Once they establish a narrative, they won't back off of it. They established the narrative in 2009 that the entire industry, that 3D would be the standard by 2013. How the fuck did that turn out for us? You know what I mean? TV, 3D televisions are slowly disappearing from store shelves. How, how the fuck well is that working out for you, guys? Hey, I, I've got a something 3D very display. familiar about all this. I have a 3D display in my bedroom, and the only time I used the 3D on it was when I reviewed it. <laughs> so that's uh, that, that's that's my uh, that's my. So you'd say that was a thorough review? <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's fucking 3D. I can't. Imagine somebody wanting to sit down with glasses and watching the shit. It's, but I mean, uh, same thing goes with my 3DS. The only time that that slider goes up to 3D is when it's by accident. And I, and I took it out of my pocket and was like, oh, why is that up? Huh. I put the slider right the fuck back down. Exactly. Well, some games make use of it, some don't. But, you know, it's, it's not going to be. They've been trying to get us on this whole uh, 3D thing for what, like 60 years now? Yeah, yeah yep. it's it's yet, slowly disappearing. I mean, we we just they have to admit at this point that it has been a failure, that it hasn't worked. Because I mean, 20th Century Fox canceling 3D movies, Sony, which in Sony Films, I mean, which in 2011, uh, I believe they put out that edict. It was either 2010 or 2011 they put out that edict that all of their films going forward not only had to be 3D but had to have the word 3D in the title. <laughs> well, now, now in 2013, they've released like two movies with 3D. <laughs> well, they're there's also there's also the that. the people who who complained about headaches during the Hobbit movies, and yeah, <laughs> well, it's, yeah, people were were physically getting sick watching these these 3D movies. So yeah, well, that's the thing. I wouldn't well. call it I wouldn't call it a failure because it's barely a concept. Even back in the mid 1950s, 3D was a neat film trick at best, and now it's well, just annoying. the 3D thing kind of kind of is a failure. I mean, I have a 3DS and I and I, I I never use the 3D in it. I keep it turned off because it's annoying. Eric, my my favorite aspects of 3D are the 3D glasses. Uh, for example, on Zombie Save My Neighbors, Zeke or Zach, I forgot his fucking name, but the kid with the tall hair, he wore 3D glasses, and I thought that was cool. And then the 3D glasses that were included with the VHS copy of the blob. Yes, the actual black and white one. I nice. had that when I was little, and I thought that was fucking cool. Other than that, no, not my thing. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's a dumb gimmick, and it's dying. I saw Avatar in 3D. That was terrible. <laughs> well, yeah, and that was when James Cameron, because he's to blame for all this fucking bullshit... 
he was he was running around saying, oh, well, all films will be standard 3D by 2013, 2014, whatever the fuck you, James. I watch, if you really I, want I to get Walking intensive, Dead. you could blame James Cameron for everything that's happened to movies in recent years. Yeah, this is absolutely true. And I, man, I don't care how many people like it. I hate the Terminator series. I think it fucking sucks. <laughs> that's me. I want to go and say something about the movie industry, actually. For and the aliens. fucking god, whoever's Sorry. making action movies, quit using that sporadic, like, I'm in the middle of an earthquake camera, because it's horrible. I don't know what, I know that the Bourne movies kind of jumped on that, and everybody thought that that became a standard, but it's not. I, I blame Cloverfield. Really? Yeah, and they, and the, man, they, they had this great movie, The Expendables, which is awesome, and they ruined the fight choreography with this stupid camera that was yeah. wedged up people's nose hole. Yeah, keep, keep in mind, when the likes of Van Damme and Stallone are on screen at the same time, I want to see them do shit because they're yeah. fucking awesome. Pull the goddamn wanna... camera bag and stop it, being in an earthquake. Yeah, it's like the fucking cameraman is currently like in some kind of earthquake on roller skates and as drunk as shit, and everybody buttered up his hands and handed him the camera and was like, you drop it, you buy it. So he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Meanwhile, there's supposed to be an epic fight taking place between two film legends, and it's just, I see it in all these action movies, and it's fucking annoying because I'm darting my eyes around in every direction, and even if I hit pause, I still have no clue what the fuck is happening. Because it's like part of an armpit and a kneecap, and I'm like, what the fuck is happening right know, it's there? Like, it's like trying to, you know what it is? It's like trying to watch scrambled porn. Uh, uh. <laughs> I can make out boobs a lot easier on there than I would between like a fucking fight scene between two hot like chicks that are fucking duking it out in a modern day action movie. I, know, I I was watching I was watching Van Damme square off with Stallone. I'm like, okay, I think I see a boob. <laughs> maybe, maybe possibly an ass, maybe. I, I think know. I see a syringe. Wait, no. Wait, yeah. <laughs> syringe. It's cool, though. And, and that's the one time that I'll be able to accept it. Uh, Cena, you have no fucking excuse. But seriously, <laughs> stop with that fucking camera work. Nobody likes it. Nobody ever goes to a movie. It's like, you know what I can't wait for? The part where I can't see anything. That's going to be my favorite. Hey, that, Alpha, that if, if you want to... If you want to fight with Stallone that you can actually see, you should watch the grudge match with, <laughs> with his fight well, against Well, that's probably Robert plenty slow, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> because no, it's it's a Rambo, the Ram John Rambo movie from 2007 with the, when he gets on the frickin' turret and turns people oh, to goo. Oh, God. That is yeah. one of my favorite things in Rambo history. And, yes, I'm saying Rambo, not First Blood. Fuck all of you that get picky. In all of the Rambo movies, like, when I saw that, I saw that shit in theaters, and it was, like, a relatively empty theater, and he just starts mowing down people, and I'm talking, like, it looked like somebody was just opening out cans of SpaghettiOs and then throwing them out. <laughs> like, they were going away, getting obliterated. The smile on my face was, like, cemented there. You, you could have fucking, like... It, it was amazing. I could have cut glass with the grin that I had, like a okay. shitty fucking I'm so happy grin, because one of my childhood heroes is murdering the fuck out of tons of people and turning them to mush. It was, That's oh, man, I'm like, right now, I have a fucking heart on. I know, I'm, I'm picturing it. And, 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 and then you I, went home and you ate SpaghettiOs. I actually have SpaghettiOs in the fucking, uh, the... Uh, what the cupboard? That's it. I almost said hamper, and I'm like, that doesn't make sense. You know, the only thing, <laughs> the, uh, the you the only spaghettios out of your hamper, man. Missing. And the only thing this movie, movies were missing was the general guy from the original Rambo Stop. movies. And now I'm wishing they had recast the general guy as Chef Boyardee. Why is he so? I want to see that. And, uh, well, actually, for anybody that watches uh, Ashens on YouTube, there's also, we could just make a cameo of Chef Excellence, which would be really funny, at least to me. Somebody might be <laughs> laughing right now if not, it's full. Have, have Rambo turn to the camera and say, Mmm, beefy. <laughs> if you guys keep I, going, we're going to have to pay a licensing fee for this. I, I was going to say, I want him to grab up like a random bitch from the movie, shove her down towards his beef stick, and, just be, and then say that, because I'd be <laughs> ten times happier. And 
I, I want them to do like a behind the head shot of her, and then it looks like he shoots a load through her skull, just like he did to all those bad guys on the turret. So that'd be <laughs> cool too. More gore is always wow. good. How did we get so off topic? Who cares? <laughs> because yeah. fuck it, it's a hate bit podcast, and we can do that. And to all the people that complain when we do it, yeah, again, suck a big fat fucking turret. A big <laughs> fat turret? <laughs> yeah, not not a turd. But the yeah. turret that, that a turret thing. Alpha Omegason will turn you into spaghetti. Smoke so. Rambo's beef. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Smoke Rocky's beef. There you go. Boom. So 2013, <laughs> quite a year, as you've heard. Um, I say it's about time for us to get out of here. So thank you for joining us. We love each and every one of you. We wish you hateful holidays and a prosperous new year and Stop. stuff like that. Anyway, I'm Yell Chaos. Joining me as always was Alpha Omegason. Thank you, fuckers, for joining us at the end of the year, and we'll see you in 2014. The Ravishing Razor Fist. I'm Razor Fist. Feed the need. And the astounding A. Salieri. Beef stick.